What makes a good deli? Pastrami. Very lovely chicken fat. Soups. Stuffed cabbage. The smell has to hit you. Potted meatball. The bursting flavor. The big sandwiches. The pickles. Chicken fricassee. Giving a product that you can't get anyplace else. New York is the cultural, spiritual homeland of Jewish deli. And deli grew from an immigrant ethnic food to a trend that was really in the mainstream in the 30s and 40s. It was a delicatessen on every single corner. Now it's really down to just a couple hundred around the country. Smell it, folks. Smell the love. I'm third generation in the delicatessen business. All right, how we doing, guys? There was no question of what Ziggy wanted to do. My grandfather threw an apron at me, and I said to myself, this is my calling. Since he was a little kid, he's been an 80-year-old Jim. You can wear one pair of pants at a time, drive one car at a time. How much does somebody need? Why anybody would want to go in this business, I have no idea. It's a daily battle. This is going to table six. He has so much stress. I didn't call all the hollers in. Oh, my God. You can't do it unless you love it. You put that personality to the restaurant. You want to go because you want to see Ziggy. Look how gorgeous this one, like Miss America. <laughs> when I cook, I feel my ancestors around me. And that's what drives me. Someone's got to take this food and continue it. It's not one of the subtler foods. You have to go for a jaw adjustment. Oh, yeah. The customer is very particular. If I don't like the way it tastes, I will never go back. Ever, not ever, not ever. <laughs> People ask me how I got into this business, and I half-jokingly say it's mental illness. Delicatessen was more than just food. It was for the soul, for the heart. It's a link to the past. We have a name for 80 years. This is the life we chose. This is what we're supposed to do. I'm a deli man. She says, the matzo ball soup is too salty. I said, did you try it? She said, no, it looks too salty.